Every coin starts as a blank piece of metal, but turning it into money isn't as simple as stamping a design. Behind each coin lies a precise, high-speed process that's been perfected over centuries. In giant factories called mints, tons of metal are melted, cut, pressed, and polished every day. The goal? Create coins that are durable, detailed, and almost impossible to counterfeit. But here's the surprising part. Some steps in this process are still done by hand, even with today's technology. And the most critical stage? It involves forces so powerful they could crush a car in seconds. So how do they shape billions of flawless coins every year? And what secret measures make it impossible for counterfeiters to copy them? The answers reveal a world few people ever get to see. The journey of a coin begins with raw metal, but not just any metal. Each country carefully chooses alloys that are strong enough to survive decades of use, yet light enough to carry in your pocket. For example, in many nations, lower-value coins like pennies are made from copper-plated zinc. Higher-value coins often use nickel or a mix of metals called cupronickel, which resists corrosion and keeps its shine over time. Special commemorative coins might even use silver or gold. At the mint, these metals arrive in massive rolls called coils. Each coil can weigh several tons and stretch hundreds of meters long. Imagine a ribbon of solid metal as wide as a human hand and as heavy as a truck. These coils are fed into powerful machines that flatten and smooth them to the perfect thickness, often within a fraction of a millimeter. Once the metal reaches the right dimensions, it's time to cut out the basic shape of the coins. Giant presses punch out thousands of small disks per minute. These disks, called blanks, look simple, but are already carefully measured for size and weight. Every blank must be identical, even a tiny variation could make the coin unusable. But the blanks aren't ready yet. Before they can be stamped with designs, they need to go through an annealing process. This involves heating them in enormous furnaces to soften the metal. At temperatures of over 500 degrees Celsius, the disks glow red-hot before cooling slowly. This treatment ensures the metal won't crack or deform during stamping. After annealing, the blanks are washed in large industrial cleaners. Any grease, dust, or oxidation is removed, and they're dried and polished to give them a smooth, even surface. At this stage, they're still featureless. No designs, no details. Just perfectly uniform metal disks. What happens next transforms these plain blanks into official currency. But to get there, the process requires unimaginable pressure. Hundreds of tons applied in milliseconds. And here's where the mint's most guarded secrets come into play. Because designing a coin isn't only about beauty, it's also about security. So how do mints create coins that are almost impossible to fake? And what hidden features do they include that you've probably never noticed? This is the moment when a blank disc becomes a coin. It's called the striking process, and it's the most dramatic stage of minting. First, each blank goes through a process called upsetting. A machine slightly raises the edges of the disc, creating a small rim. This isn't just for looks. The rim protects the coin's design from wear and tear during years of circulation. Next, the prepared blanks, now called planchets, are fed into high-speed coining presses. These massive machines work with astonishing force. In a single strike, they apply hundreds of tons of pressure, enough to flatten steel, stamping detailed images and inscriptions into the surface. The designs themselves are masterpieces of precision. Artists and engravers create them using a combination of hand-drawn sketches and digital modeling. The final design is then transferred to a steel die, which acts like a mold. Each die is engraved with the coin's front obverse and back reverse designs, as well as edge details and tiny text. But here's something few people know. These dies don't last long. The pressure of striking wears them down quickly, so mints constantly replace them to maintain crisp details. At full speed, modern presses can strike more than 700 coins per minute. The noise is deafening, a rhythmic pounding as thousands of planchets become legal tender every hour. But stamping isn't just about making coins look good, it's also about making them hard to fake. Counterfeiting has been a problem for centuries, and modern mints fight it with clever techniques. Some coins use reeded edges, 
those tiny ridges on the edge of quarters and euros. Originally, this prevented people from shaving off bits of precious metal. Today, it's a security feature. Machines can easily detect if reading is missing or uneven. Others include microtext, so small it's almost invisible to the naked eye. For example, certain euro coins hide letters in the design that can only be seen under magnification. There's also bimetallic technology. Think of coins like the euro or British pound, which have two different metals fused together. This makes them extremely difficult to duplicate. In some countries, coins even have latent images, tiny hologram-like effects that change when tilted. And a few experimental designs use electromagnetic signatures, allowing vending machines to instantly verify authenticity. These anti-counterfeit measures are so advanced that most people never notice them. Yet they're critical for keeping billions of transactions secure every day. What's surprising is that, despite all this technology, human hands are still part of the process. Workers visually inspect coins for flaws and remove any that don't meet strict standards. But even after striking, a coin's journey isn't over. There's still one more step that gives coins their distinctive shine and ensures they're ready to enter circulation. So how do mints give coins their flawless finish? And what happens to the ones that fail inspection? Once coins are struck, they still don't look like the shiny pieces we carry in our pockets. Fresh from the press, their surfaces can appear dull, and tiny traces of oil or dust might still remain. To fix this, coins go through a finishing process designed to clean, polish, and protect them. The first step is tumbling. Large batches of coins are placed into rotating drums filled with cleaning agents and tiny ceramic or steel balls. As the drums spin, the coins rub against the materials, polishing their surfaces and removing any leftover debris. This process gives coins their smooth, reflective finish. For higher value or commemorative coins, the process is even more meticulous. These coins might be proof coins, specially made for collectors. Each one is hand polished and struck multiple times with specially prepared dyes, creating sharp details and mirror-like surfaces. Workers often wear gloves to avoid leaving fingerprints on the delicate finish. Some mints also apply protective coatings to certain coins. These coatings help prevent tarnishing and extend the life of the coin, especially in harsh climates. Before coins can leave the mint, they must pass strict quality control. Even with modern machinery, not every coin is perfect. At this stage, both technology and humans come into play. Automated inspection systems use high-resolution cameras and sensors to scan coins at high speed. These systems detect flaws as small as a hairline scratch or a faint misalignment in the design. But machines can't catch everything. Teams of trained inspectors still examine random samples by hand. They look for striking errors like double images, off-center designs, or missing details. Coins that fail are sent to be melted down and recycled into new blanks. This attention to detail is crucial. One defective batch slipping through could damage a mint's reputation and cause problems in circulation. Once approved, coins are sorted and counted by automated machines that work with lightning speed. They're then packaged into bags, rolls, or boxes, depending on their destination. For circulation coins, these packages are sent to banks, armored trucks, and even retail stores. From there, they're distributed into the economy ready to be used in everyday transactions. For collector's coins or limited editions, the process is different. These are carefully packaged in protective cases with certificates of authenticity, then shipped to buyers around the world. But before continuing, what happens to old coins? As new coins enter circulation, old and damaged ones are removed. Banks and businesses send worn-out coins back to the mint, where they are melted down and turned into raw metal for future production. This recycling not only saves resources, but also reduces costs. Coins may seem simple, but their creation involves layers of science, art, and engineering. By the time one lands in your hand, it has passed through dozens of machines, multiple inspections, and the hands of skilled workers. But there's still one question left. What happens when a coin isn't just money, but a piece of history? For most people, a coin is just a tool for daily transactions, but some coins go far beyond their face value. They become pieces of history, art, and even fortune. 
Throughout history, certain coins have gained legendary status, some because of their rarity, others because of mistakes during production. Take, for example, the 1943 copper penny from the United States. That year, pennies were supposed to be made of steel due to wartime shortages. But a few copper blanks were accidentally left in the presses. Only about 40 of these coins are known to exist, and one sold for over $1 million at auction. Then, there's the 2008 20 pence coin from the United Kingdom. A minting error left out the date on a small batch of coins. These dateless coins are now highly sought after, often selling for hundreds of times their original value. These mistakes, though rare, show how even in highly controlled environments, human error can create something extraordinary. Today, coins are facing new challenges. With the rise of digital payments, some countries are producing fewer coins each year. But coins remain an essential part of economies worldwide, especially in regions where cash is still dominant. Mints are also experimenting with new technologies. Some are testing laser engraving for even finer details. Others are exploring materials like polymer blends for lighter, more durable coins. And there are even discussions about integrating microchips or digital authentication codes into coins, though these are still in experimental stages. Despite the move toward digital money, coins hold a special place in culture. They're durable symbols of history and identity. Every design tells a story, leaders, monuments, wildlife, events. In your pocket right now, there may be coins featuring centuries-old traditions or modern celebrations. Collectors know this well. Numismatics, the study and collection of coins, is a global hobby. Rare finds can change hands for millions, but even common coins can carry fascinating stories. By the time a coin reaches you, it has traveled an incredible path. From raw metal in massive coils to a carefully inspected, polished piece of currency, it has passed through fire, pressure, and human craftsmanship. Every scratch or worn edge on a coin carries a trace of its journey, how many hands it has passed through, how many pockets it has sat in, how many lives it has touched. Next time you hold a coin, take a moment to really look at it. Notice the details, the edges, the designs. It's more than just money. It's a small work of art and a product of centuries of innovation. So, the next time you see a coin lying on the ground or sitting forgotten in a drawer, think about the journey it took to get there. Maybe it's worth more than you think. Have you ever found a rare or unusual coin? Share your story in the comments, and don't forget to like this video if you learned something new.